Hi there, welcome to the Wheel Photography Company. Uh, my name's Justin Quinnell. I'm going to give you a few tips on how to do camera obscures, uh, room camera obscures, that is, and also how to do day long and up to six month duration exposure solar graph images, images of the sun moving across the sky. Both amazing little projects which cost virtually nothing and uh, well, keep you off the streets for a while anyway. So we're going to start off, I'm going to show you a few images. I'm going to talk a little bit about history and then go back to the actual practical. So let's see if this all works, which it might. Boom, ba -dum. You. Boom. Okay. Um, so it's our summer school. We're basically doing this because we're in lockdown or have been in lockdown and the dark room has been out of use. So we thought, right, let's put a load of resources out there. And, um, you know, it's open for anybody to use this sort of stuff. Both the room obscura and the pinhole cameras for solography rely upon the fact that light travels in a straight line through a hole. This is how pinhole photography works. At the top, there's loads of lines of light reflecting off a vase of flowers. At the bottom, you can see the light's been inhibited through a tiny hole. Let's use this. There we go. And that means that like, you end up with an inverted image, which is how a pinhole creates a picture. Now, this has been known for thousands of years. Uh, Moti in China, about 400 BC, he thought it was like arrows being fired, the direction of light. And then we had Aristotle sussing out stuff. And then we had Althazan, seeing the image was inverted. And Brunelleschi, about 1400, 1415, realizing that you could cre create three dimensional objects on a two dimensional plane and call it perspective. Um, quite amazing, quite fantastic. Lenses didn't really come on the scene, so you could make them clear and clear glass required samphire to be added to it. Look it up, Venice, all clever stuff. But before that, the hole was the main way that people used to study what light was. Um, talking about studying what light was, here's my kids studying what light was, uh, creating uh, little eclipses, little partial eclipses through the holes in a cream cracker. Um, and loads of other kids from the school, 250 cream crackers later, and everyone could see the eclipse being projected. Great fun. And uh, yeah, the cream crackers all went, I don't know where. So, you know, we can still explore a lot with pinholes, something really basic. You don't have to spend tons of money on anything. Believe me, I don't. I just stare at my recycling box and see what I come up with next. Um, so anyway, some camera obscures use a lens and that's fine, but it's difficult to project that image on a certain distance if it's quite far. Yeah, if your room is sort of four meters, 26 centimeters long, getting a lens to focus that, because lenses need focusing, is tricky. So we use a hole rather than a lens. This is the camera obscure on the down. Brilliant, fantastic, superb, uses a lens. We're not going to do that. We're going to be using a hole. Rather like this bloke here, photographing this lady in yellow, who's wondering what on earth is happening and why she's staring at that hole, which is all part and parcel of it all. And he's there saying things like, oh, stop moving, stop moving, and drawing a picture. So projecting an image through a hole onto a piece of material. Now, it could be a piece of material, but because holes are in focus, pinhole images in focus the whole way, you can actually project onto the wall, which is what I'd like you all to do or have a go. There are a few people who've done a brilliant stuff like this. Look them up. Abelardo Morel, what an amazing person. Um, fantastic, a legend. And this is in Philadelphia Museum of Art, Modern Art. Um, this is a, a hotel, these blacked out hotel rooms and projected the image on the you know, inside walls of hotels overlooking famous places like Tower Bridge. And this is another he's done where he's inverted the image using a prism and uh, so he's created a sunrise image on the wall. So it's a mixture of a solar graph and an actual um, obscure projection. And this here, I can't see who, can't find out who did it, but it's lovely putting a wide angle camera on its back looking straight upwards. Uh, at the projection that's created. Marja Perilia from Finland, again, look her up, the amazing stuff she's done. And this is projecting onto a wall. You see they're lying down, because it's a good sort of 10 minute, 20 minute exposure. Good for a sit down. If you've got a um, you know, fancy lens, that's how, a fancy camera, a DSLR or a fancy new phone or something like that, you can do time exposures. And time exposures of about uh, two minutes will often work fine if you've got a sensitive enough um, DSLR. If not, if you haven't got any of those fancy things to photograph the picture, just sit there and when your eyes adjust, it'll be fantastic. Don't worry too much. Or, as I say, use a DSLR or something, set on an 800 SA and do a time exposure. And this is amazing because she stood in front of the hole projecting an image of her shadow, but then there's a lamp underneath the bed. And again, combining 
projected image with you know, leaking light. I normally tell people to black out the room 100% and you should really to start off with. And then when it comes to experimentation, then play with stuff. Um, okay, so another one projecting onto the ceiling. And these are a few more experiments where there's a book just hanging there with clouds moving across it and a wardrobe which has got projections within it. So, you know, you can take it further than just a room. Uh, you can even make them out of snow if you want to. Right, um, so I'm going to just go into, uh, here we go, let's have a go at the joys of. Oop. A couple of things you might need for doing a camera obscure projection. Now, if you use a hole, black out the window and under the door and everything else, no problem. But like use either cardboard, there's enough of that around these days, or parcels being posted everywhere, or rubble sacks, which are really thick black plastic sacks you can use. Um, and uh, don't find a room with a massive window, a small window, make it far easier. Yeah. Um, and then just sort of like black it out and wait for your eyes to adjust. A hole should be about the size of a hole punch, something like that. That'd be fine to start off with. Um, if you want to use a, a lens, and you can, we've been giving out a few lenses. There's a couple which are these here. They focus at about mm, that, that distance. So you only get a small projection. It'd be quite bright, but quite small. Better still than using one of those is a little lens. There it is. That's from a one pound uh, pair of reading glasses, one diopter. Yeah, plus one, you'll see on the thing. That focuses at a meter, plus one means one meter. And so you can end up with a nice big projection. And you can project not onto the wall, but onto a really cheap, rubbishy shower curtain. These cost about two pounds from a horrible supermarket, beginning with T and ending in O. Yeah, and basically they're so flimsy and, one, and rubbish, they're fantastic for viewing through the image. So you can hold it up and have a fantastic big image and get somebody to run around outside, yeah? few ideas anyway, uh, just have a little look at the videos on the resources page. Right, that's enough camera obscure fun. We are now going to have a little look at pinhole stuff, how to do six month exposure and one day exposure pinhole stuff. Um, the first thing I'd like to, to do is just show people, this is bound to go wrong, Yippee. aluminium can, a tall one, not the short ones, the short ones won't really be high enough. And you. Go like this. Can anyone see that? I don't know if you can or not. Who knows? This might work. If it doesn't, I blame everyone else. Yep, yeah, that's failing. There is a lovely way, it does work, but it's my can opens a bit messed up, of opening a can perfectly without there being any sharp edge. Now, it doesn't matter too much because, like, unless you're doing kitty workshops, there you go. And we've got a nice clean edge there. Not bad. So there, what you do is you make your pinhole really important. So you find a place that's sort of like quite interesting. We'll have the alu, the alu, alu. And we, here's how to make the pinhole. It's exciting, watch. That's the maths and there's the pinhole. Then you use a, um, yeah, dressmaking pin. Bit of insulation tape, sticky stuff. Stick it over the hole there. Yeah. Oop. So you've got your camera, the pinhole. To make a light tight lid, just cut the bottom off a can of Pepsi, can of Coke, can of anything, can of water, can of can, can of something, but not steel, aluminium can, yeah, drink. And then that can go over the top, make a light tight waterproof lid and put gaffer tape around the top. The photo paper weird one this and we'll come to this with the videos and things but photographic paper is sensitive to light light sensitive stuff not the stuff you put in inkjets we'll come to that with other things but like not light sensitive that stuff and it comes in packets 25 sheets of five seven would be good cost about a tenner and it's light sensitive if you were to take a piece out and get a coin like a hundred lira as i happen to have here and you put the coin on and then you sort of like take it, put it in daylight for a few seconds, actually about a minute. What happens is the light hits the silver and goes dark. It goes dark over time, the latent image forms. 
it's not going to go black instantly. That only happens when you have developer. With a latent image, it takes a while, and that's how the solar graph image works. The sun draws a sort of black line every time the sun goes across the sky. Yeah, it's almost like getting a suntan. So we leave that in the camera. So we use a latent image, which eventually sort of like we scan in. Put the photographic paper inside, curled round, so there's a gap where the pinhole is. I may as well do that for yourselves, except for the fact that that's a bit mucky. Uh -huh. So you get your photo paper, don't leave it lying around for too long, and then you curl it round inside the camera like that and there's a gap Whee, there you go there's a gap that's where the pinhole is and then you get your lid put it on top cap it tape it on and that's your camera i can sit outside for months on end and theoretically not get wet but it sometimes works the other way of doing a camera something i came up with recently is you get yourself one of these light tight cartons now they're not all light tight some of them let light in yeah the whiter ones but these if they've got silver on the inside they're light tight mark it out as i've done on the resources and then you end up with this it's rather nifty you can fold this over like that and you get a nice box put a pinhole over there just push a pin for a little bit of metal make it a bit smaller maybe about one millimeter diameter and you end up with a little box like this which you can put your photo paper in into there. Just stick it in there, a little bit of tape, and you can get four pictures. So there we go, and it folds up. And it doesn't really let much light in, which is rather cool. So that's another little pinhole camera. You can vary the height, yeah? So if you get it about that high, it's more telephoto, it won't be quite as sharp. You can even make it lower if you like. Try and do more wide angle, but less distorted, because it's a flat film thing. So that's another type of pinhole camera you can play with. Um, I'm going to show you a few more slides. That'd be good. So let's have a go at that. Do, do, do. Um, OK, so this is Fox Talbot. He sussed out how latent images form. Some of his photographs, the Talbot type, didn't use developer, just used exposed light. Or was it the color type? We're getting mixed up. But one of them just relied on the sun darkening an image. When you take the cat photograph out after a day, a few weeks, a month, two months, six months, the image is sort of pinky brown with this image on the top. And you need to scan it or photograph it or take a photograph of your phone and then use imaging software to invert it. And you can, if you just look like inverting an image, you can download apps and download little programs that mean you can invert the picture or you can get Photoshop or something like that. Then you can play around with levels if you like. Up to you, yeah? The image appears colour, so I always scan them in colour. Here's a few examples. Uh, oh no, here's the um, smaller camera, which does a less wide angle image, less distorted, um, rather nifty. I call it the Tetra Cam, someone's got to. And this is how you load the camera in the beer can camera. Day exposures, go back to Dominique Struvon. So we're gonna look at a few day exposures and then the longer exposures, they work in a similar way. Um, but this is digging out a hole in the ground and doing a picture for the whole duration of the day. This is one of my day ones. That's actually using an aluminium can in the Lanzarote of all things. Um, greenhouse, put them inside. If you've got a greenhouse, or you've got a conservatory and stuff, and the sun comes in, put a pinhole camera for a few days. You get the sun moving across as long as the glass can sort of like you know, transmit the light clearly. Um, but also be aware that if somebody picks the camera up, then it'd be a bit messed up. That's from inside a greenhouse. Uh, underneath a tomato plant, you can see at the bottom, the tomato plant was blowing around everywhere. This is a goal, looking up to goal posts. These are all done the last week, um, which has been a bit cloudy. And looking at the car, one's done on top of the car and one's done from inside the car. And then we have looking up at tomatoes again, the sun moving across, quite like that one. So don't think you have to know what you're getting. Put the camera upside down and just guess. Uh, this is a photographing with a a leaf skeleton in front of the uh, pinhole, which is, is quite interesting. I think that's quite odd, but you can put them inside as well. And we have a go at that today. And then looking up lace curtains, a bit shaken because the amount I look through my lace curtains at the neighbors, of course. And then looking up a book, 
just experimenting really. It's all little experiments, just playing. Uh, looking up at the um, our little cycle thing, exercise bike, and then a picture looking at sunset, got a bit cloudy towards the end. This is Diego Lopez Calvin, who's done the most brilliant stuff. Again, knowing where the sun will rise or set is superb. It's really fun to try and do that, work out the maps of it all. Um, if you do use a can during the midsummer, you'll find that it's too high. The sun won't get midsummer sun. So you need to either tilt it back or do a picture looking east or west. That's the handy thing with the, um, these little cameras here, is you can do a picture, you know, sort of like pointing the sunrise or sunset, it magnifies the image a bit. And there's another one working out how to actually um, where the sun rises. And that's a total eclipse where the sun's going across and then blacks out and comes back again. Very simple, just a line, two lines, but I love it. And Chris McCaw, his cameras, he uses a lens so it gets really hot in there. And sometimes his uh, cameras fill up, fill up the smoke and burst into flame. So if you want an exciting time, do what he does. And this is an Enelema. And an element, not only being really annoying if you get it in Scrabble, is also the midday sun over a whole year. Um, it is done by a wonderful Polish guy, Maciej, and he basically has done these. And there was at one point more people had stood on the moon than photographed an anelema, but pinholes opened it up a bit. Longer exposures, again, Dominic Struble initiated them all. Wonderful stuff. I remember this when I started getting into pinhole, how amazing it was. Um, uh, other people as well, Michael Wesley, he's using a lens, it's a five-year exposures, uh, which are rather cool. Um, and again, longer exposures, Diego Lopez, Calvin. And Talia Trigg went and did a big project, she's from Finland, and she uh, did a big project promoting getting sunrises and sunsets around the world. This is one of mine, Bristol, uh, Clifton Suspension Bridge, six months. And the, this is evidence that it actually is sunny sometimes in Newcastle. Wow. Don't put them out in the, they try not to put them outside in the wild. Uh, I got a phone call from Scotland Yard saying, don't do that, please. Um, Cause they were finding them in dodgy places. And so, yeah, just put it somewhere private away, got permission. Um, takes a bit of the fun out, but there we go. We live in those times. Um, and this is putting one up, that's not me, too scared. Uh, at the SS Great Britain in Bristol. And then another one, see how high I used to put them. And as long as they're higher than the drunk person can reach on another drunk person's shoulders, then they'll survive. But if you reach really high and put them somewhere, they'll go, because someone else can do that. Always take a step ladder with you and a yellow jacket and a builder's hat, you'll be fine. This is the Clifton Cathedral. And then St. Mary Redcliffe with the, the lights at the bottom here, these things here, are where the sun's reflected off cars in a car park, it's rather cool. Um, yeah. That's when you used to be able to position them sneakily. And this inside, that's the Armagh Planetarium, but do them indoors as well. Lovely. Maze it survived. That was six months. And looking at trees when the trees shed their leaves, we end up with the sun moving across us, moving through the tree. And little ones made out of film pops. This is a jolly one. This is three months in the death of Lance, Grace, and Dorcas. So a very short three months and a very long death. Yeah, something jolly to think about. And year exposures, the emulsion does start rotting after about a year. This is the Eiffel Tower for a year. And then when it gets really wet, it gets a bit crazy, but very nice. And then put them on moving objects, ships. Come on, my latest project, put them at the tops of tall ships. I wouldn't do this, it's too scary. And you end up with seven month exposure of going across the Atlantic. Okay, now, um, please do, have a look at the resources. Um, have a little look at uh, the videos that we've done, have a look at the PDFs that we've done, and please do also send us any images you've got, because like we can make a little sort of like gallery of the pictures you've taken. Um, and uh, yeah, go for it, have fun, and uh, catch, you, catch up with you in further workshops in the future. Bye bye.